Today, we're chatting about the top three chat GPT mistakes clinic owners make in marketing and SEO, along with how you can avoid them. Hello, and welcome to the Propel Your Practice podcast. I am so excited to be here with you today. My name is Darcy Sullivan with Propel Marketing and Design. So today we are going to dive into three of the biggest mistakes I see chiropractors and other clinic owners making when it comes to using AI tools like chat GPT. Now, before we dive in, I want to go over a few basics and give you some additional resources. By now, you've probably already heard about chat GPT. In no way is this episode going to go over the basics of chat GPT. There was an interview that I was on the Modern Chiropractic Marketing Podcast in February, episode number 305, where we discuss the basics of ChatGPT, what it is, and how you can use it. I'm not going to repeat that episode here, but if you are interested in listening to that episode, you can visit Modern Chiropractic Marketing dot com slash podcast slash 305 or you can go to the show notes of this episode to get that link. So again, we're not discussing the basics of what chat GPT is. Now, if you have yet to play with chat GPT or you're interested in seeing how you can use it, I've got another resource for you, which is a few prompts that we put together to get you started with using ChatGPT. If you're interested in grabbing that resource, you can visit propelyourcompany.com slash chatgpt dash prompts. Or again, you can visit the show notes of this episode to grab that link. So today we are talking all about chat GPT and some of the most common mistakes that I see clinic owners doing when it comes to using this tool. I wanted to make sure that this resource lasted a little bit longer, meaning that you know, we're on such a revolutionary road when it comes to AI and things are changing at such an aggressive speed. So today, the three biggest mistakes that we're going to go over, I, I think if you were to listen to this a year from now, that they would still be relevant or at least the next three to six months. Last week, Propel Marketing and Design put on a webinar for clinic owners all about how they could use AI tools like ChatGPT. And, you know, there's so much more you can cover during a workshop because you're able to share screens and you're able to walk through. And it was such a fun workshop. I really hope you are able to join us for last week's workshop. And if you weren't, it is available through the Ready, Set, Rank program. If you're interested in learning more about that, you can find that information on our website at propelyourcompany.com. There's also one more resource that I want to share with you before we dive into the three biggest mistakes. And that is a workshop that you can find at propelyourcompany.com slash learn, which is a free SEO workshop. SEO is search engine optimization. And during this workshop, I share with you the five secrets to owning the first page of Google without paying for ads. 
You can find the link to sign up for this free workshop in the notes of this episode or again by visiting propelyourcompany.com slash learn. During that workshop, we do a deep dive into strategies to help you improve your online presence. This includes talking about Google Business Profile. That's what used to be called your Google My Business listing and what controls the Google Maps section along with voice SEO. SEO plays such a huge role in today's ability for your potential clients, customers, and patients to find you online. So we do want to make sure that you're getting the biggest return from the efforts that you're putting out. So again, you can check out that free training by going to propelyourcompany.com slash learn. But let's jump back to today's topic. So today we are talking about, again, those three biggest mistakes that I see clinic owners making. And number one is that they're relying too heavily on chat GPT. Chat GPT is a tool. It's not a strategy. So you want to make sure that you're not overlooking the importance of fine-tuning the responses that you get from it. You know, the content that ChatGPT pushes out, some of it is just not optimized at all for SEO, search engine optimization. It can provide incorrect information. Some of the content just sounds so similar and basic, almost even a little robotic. So you want to make sure that you're not over-dependent on these tools because you're going to find a lack of personalization. So again, biggest mistake number one is relying too much on these tools. And an example of this would be if you go to ChatGPT and you just say, write me a blog post on name of topic. You are going to get some really basic generalized information that is not going to reflect your brand. And it's really not going to be a value add by just placing it on your website. You're not going to get the website traffic or engagement on your website by just adding that generic information. As I mentioned before, ChatGPT is a tool. It's not a strategy. And so this leads us to the second biggest mistake that I see people making, and that's not outlining the process that they want to achieve. So in the example I just gave about just going to chat GPT and saying, hey, write me a blog post about topic, whatever. Again, you're going to get some generic information. But if you sit down and you outline the process. So for example, if I were going to write a blog post. My process would not be go to ChatGPT and say, hey, ChatGPT, write me a blog post about topic. No, my process looks different. It includes a number of different steps. First, I would identify who the audience is Next, I would identify which target SEO keyword I want to focus on and what the topic is going to be for that blog post. Then I would define the actions or results I want somebody to take or knowledge that I want them to walk away from that blog post with. Then I would outline the blog post. Then I would write the blog post. I would proof the blog post. Then give the blog post a click-worthy title load the blog post, add graphics to the blog post, make sure that the blog post was optimized for search engines and SEO friendly. I would then promote the blog post via social media, maybe even create some video around the blog post, and I would promote the blog post via email. So that outline of a process is about 12 steps. See how different that is than going to chat GPT and just saying, Hey, ChatGPT, write me a blog post about topic. Now what you want to do is once you've got an outline, 
then you can plug in where and how you can use AI tools like ChatGPT to help you through that process. So ideally, you've identified your audience on your own. That most likely isn't going to be ChatGPT's service to you unless you're brainstorming with it and going back and forth. Your keyword research, you're probably not doing that in ChatGPT. You're probably doing that elsewhere. Now, if you wanted to go to ChatGPT and brainstorm topics, you could do that. You could ask ChatGPT to give you an outline for the blog post, but then you're going to want to go back and really fine-tune it, not just go in and tell it to create a blog post for you. You, One of the re- ways I love using ChatGPT is to get some click-worthy titles. Now, you could go back and after you've got your blog post written, You could go to ChatGPT and say, give me 10 or 15 names for a blog post about and put in the topic. So there's ways that you can plug resources like ChatGPT and other AI tools into your overall process. But again, they are not a strategy. They are simply a tool. And the number three biggest fail that I see clinic owners do when it comes to using chat GPT to help with them with their content marketing and SEO is that they fail to train the AI model on brand specific data, meaning that they're not customizing the information that they're giving the resource of chat GPT. So therefore their output isn't reflecting their brand's voice or the audience that the brand is trying to connect with. So what do you do instead? Well, like I mentioned, last week we did a big training on this and we walked through the whole process and I shared all the slides, which we can't do via podcast, but to kind of give you a little glimpse into what I would suggest that you do for that, first you want to train it on your brand. So The more information that you can give these resources up front, the easier it's going to be. So what you could do is you could go to ChatGPT and first ask it to determine your writing style. And I did this. I said, hey, ChatGPT, determine our writing style. And I pasted a whole blog post. And then it came back. And mind you, I was using the paid version. um, But it came back with some really great input. It said that the writing style was informative and educational, conversational and engaging, structured and organized, action-oriented, friendly and approachable. So then you're able to go back to ChatGPT with a style and a structure that you want it to work with. I would first ask it to outline a blog post if I needed assistance with that, and I would tell it in advance, this is the style that I'm interested in, this is who our brand is, and this is the audience that we want to connect with. Right now, as I'm recording this, you have to treat ChatGPT as if it doesn't know your brand, because you know what? It doesn't. So to wrap up, three of the biggest mistakes that I see people making when they're using ChatGPT in marketing and SEO is one, relying too heavily on ChatGPT and overlooking the importance of fine-tuning AI responses, two, not outlining the process, and three, failing to train the AI model on your brand-specific data. I wanted to make sure that this episode would live on a bit. So I am not mentioning the specifics of prices or which version of chat GPT is in use. But I will say this right now, as I'm recording this, you can pay to get a more premium service with chat GPT. And the difference that it offers is outstanding. So you might want to consider 
if you are going to use a resource like ChatGPT to also try the paid version. We are going to wrap up here in a minute. I just want to go over again a couple of resources that we talked about in this episode. You can go to propelyourcompany.com to find all of them. A few that I wanted to mention again were the prompts guide. If you're interested in playing with a few chat GPT prompts, you can visit propelyourcompany.com slash chat GPT dash prompts to download that guide to give you some prompts to get started. You can also sign up for the free SEO workshop on the five secrets to owning the first page of Google without paying for ads. You can find a link to sign up for this free masterclass in the show notes for this episode or by visiting propelyourcompany.com slash learn. During this workshop, we do a deep dive into strategies to help you improve your online presence, including your Google business profile. That's what used to be called the Google My Business listing and what controls the Google Maps section, along with how voice SEO plays a big role in today's search and where you should be focusing your efforts online for the biggest impact. All right. Well, that's it for today. Again, you can join the masterclass by visiting propelyourcompany.com forward slash learn. And if you have a topic that you would like to hear on an upcoming episode of Propel Your Practice, please send it in by visiting propelyourcompany.com forward slash podcast dash topics or looking for the link in the show notes. Thanks so much for your time. I'll talk to you soon. <music>